Hi, this is Mariana Curran. I'm a senior executive ambassador with Forever. I want to welcome you to this overview of Forever and its family of products. So are you drowning in photos? Uh, do you have photos um, that are printed that need to be digitized? Do you have lots of photos that are located on external hard drives and camera cards? and in your camera uh, and lost in computers. So we, we, have, we tend up photos in lots of different places and uh, we're starting to get worried about it uh, because we have somewhat of a sea of photos uh, that, that we need to get organized and pass down um, to our children and our grandchildren and, and the rest of the generations. So um, I'm here to help you um, with that. So there are about three trillion photos that are waiting to be digitized uh, in the world. That's quite a bit of pictures. And unfortunately, um, we take more photos than we ever did. And I say unfortunately because they're not being preserved uh, in a manner that they'll be able to be seen by future generations. Um, in fact, this generation is uh, photos are considered to be, uh, it's considered that this will be a lost generation, that they are, images will not be available to them when they want them um, in years to come. And do you have, in addition to your photos, um, old media that you're no longer able to enjoy because you don't have the equipment to play it on any longer? And, and is this media deteriorating? Uh, and um, I can tell you that actually it is deteriorating because um, that's what, um, what happens uh, when they sit in um, canisters and uh, on reel to reels. So um, have you thought about what you're going to do about those? We're going to talk about that in a, in a little bit. So we are a people of stories. Um, our photos mean something to us. We took them because in that moment um, we wanted to be able to have a story and uh, to pass these memories on, to relive um, the highlights of our life and, and even the everyday um, stories of our life. And these are pictures um, of my family. Um, that's my uh, wedding photo with my dad in the top left-hand corner. And my son is in the bottom left, and uh, we've had, we had many happy memories um, at the beach in New Jersey. Uh, my daughter is in the top right-hand corner who preferred to live life upside down for the first year of her life. And I'd had to warn people every time that she would go into their arms that she would flip herself. And she did it rather uh, uh, vigorously, so you had to really hold on tight. And there's my husband and I at a, at a uh, Halloween party. And um, he, he, I never saw him with that much hair. He's, he's fairly bald right now. So... This is a photo that means a lot to him. Um, but we, we save lots of uh, things other than photos. Um, we have recipes and, and our um, marriage certificates and a lot of other, um, many other documents that we want to be able to preserve. So um, what gets in the way of preserving them? Well, um, fires and floods and tornadoes, things we don't have control over and things that we think will never happen to us. Um, and um, my one of my friends, um, a good friend of hers, uh, lost her home in a tornado uh, a few weeks back uh, in Mississippi, and she uh, did not do anything about her pictures. And unfortunately, she lost quite a bit. It was quite sad. Um, I have heard a, I heard a story recently recently from someone who lost their cell phone in the back seat of a taxi cab. Um, coming back from a trip of a lifetime in Hawaii, and all of her photos were lost. And then we have things that happen uh, just because um, we're busy and our lives are busy and we don't get around to organizing them. And, um, you know, we, we downsize. We don't have space for all of our pictures. And then we start to make decisions about what's important and what's not important. And unfortunately, if there aren't stories attached to some of our images, um, they lose their importance. And then things happen um, like computer crashes uh, and then just the plain deterioration of our images. So we often think that um, our, having our photos preserved on DVDs and CDs, um, are, we're doing a good job in preserving them, unfortunately. 
um, they don't last that long, only about a five-year lifespan. And computers will crash. It's not, um, will they crash? It's just a matter of time. And uh, these are my external hard drives that have all um, died at some point. And they don't give me warning often. They just decide not to work one day and, and uh, anything that's on them are gone. So I'm constantly backing things up, um, though I do um, place my photos in what's called the cloud. And um, this is the wave of the future. Um, we are all going to go there sooner or later. Uh, if you look at uh, MacBook Pros that are recently out, they don't even have USB um, plugs so that there is no choice uh, put, but to back up everything to a, a cloud source. So, we, so you know, most people ask me, well, what is the cloud? Well, the cloud's actually a building, and it's many buildings, and um, with lots of computers in them that are uh, putting all of your data into uh, code uh, that can be retrieved when you want to retrieve it. And these buildings are all redundantly backed up, and uh, there are more than, uh, so when you're in a cloud service, you're typically in more than one location. And that's, that's very important that that is the case. Um, so a cloud is actually safer than your own home. Um, your home is great with external hard drives, uh, but as I said, um, eventually they will not um, be functional. So the next question is, well, what kind of cloud services should I be looking at and where should I be putting my uh, photos and my data? And uh, all of these cloud services have um, different goals in mind. And um, my goal is to take care of my photos, so that's the kind of service um, I would be looking for. And actually, I was on this same hunt uh, for cloud service, be service because I knew um, how um, how fragile the external hard drives were, and I had quite a bit of photos, and I was getting concerned. So I looked into a number of places. Uh, so Google uh, Photos uh, has done a fabulous job of advertising themselves, and um, they uh, take your photos, but their main goal is to sell to you. They want to see what your interests are, where you take your photos, what you're wearing, um, what kind of products they can sell um, and sell your data to and have the those other companies reach out to you, whether it's for vacations or clothing lines, um, you are giving that that permission to them to sell. Uh, they You can even delete your photos off of Google and they will keep them um, so that they can turn around possibly and sell your images to someone else. That's, that's a pretty scary um, thing that can happen. If you have an iCloud, um, you will um, likely have, I'm sorry, if you have an iPhone, you're likely to have iCloud and you're, you think you're backing up, even though I've had many clients think that they're backing up and they're actually not. And in many cases, they're paying $20 a month uh, for nothing. And the photos were just sitting still in their uh, phones. The one, uh, one of the big obvious things about iCloud is that there's no right of survivorship. So all of these, uh, I, I took these uh, directly out of terms of service that you sign on and agree to when you um, use their, their services. Uh, and you can see right here about no right of re uh, uh, survivorship that your account is terminated, terminated upon your death. And they will know you're dead if you stop paying the bill. Um, so that's a pretty obvious kind of thing. Um, they're, they're not going to double check. They're, you stop paying and for a period of several months um, your account will be terminated. Plus they will not pass your account on to someone else. Um, they will not give you access to someone else's account. We've seen this happen with the federal government not being able to get into the San Bernardino um, iCloud accounts of the, um, the shooters. So um, they're serious about this. And I have seen people lose um, their pictures to iCloud. In one case, it was actually from corruption. Um, the account was corrupted, and, and several years of photos were left by one of my clients. Um, she was fairly, she was very upset. 
Um, Dropbox um, is great for what it does. Uh, it's good for possibly sharing with other people. Um, but again, they're not in the business of long-term storage of your data. They even tell you um, that if you've not accessed your account, if, if it's a free account, uh, over a, a reasonable period of time, um, they will uh, delete your uh, data. And uh, they do it within a year if you've not gone into that account. So these are things you need to be concerned about. Uh, I don't have written up here Facebook. A lot of people tell me they use Facebook as their backup. Well, all of your photos in Facebook are being uh, condensed. They are, um, they are taking all the data and making it um, not um, at the same resolution that you sent it up in. That's the way they can offer it to you um, for free. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a concern. Um, and uh, I have people that use Shutterfly and Snapfish, and uh, I believe it's Snapfish versus Shutterfly, I'm not positive, um, will only let you download one photo at a time. That is uh, painful uh, if you've got 3,000, 5,000 photos up there, and you can, only go, you can only get them back one at a time. These are not backup services um, that you want to be using. So um, I was on this quest for uh, where to put my photos, and uh, a few years prior to that, uh, this gentleman here, uh, Glenn Meekum, the co-founder of our company, or not the co-founder, uh, he's the founder of our company, and uh, he was on this same uh, journey to find a place to place all of his uh, grandparents' uh, stories and photos and memorabilia and he could not find that service. He was on the board of trustees, or I'm sorry, the board of um, the Carnegie Mellon Endowment Board, and he knew how to uh, work an endowment fund, how it worked. Um, he's an internet guru, um, had invested money, he was a venture capitalist, uh, ventured and uh, created um, a, several very successful online companies, um, that he went on to sell, and now he spends his time full-time with uh, forever. So um, he knows that using a, an endowment-like fund, and he, we call it the Forever Guaranteed Fund, uh, is a great way uh, to invest money and to have it grow over time. And with, the, uh, with this fund, uh, most of the money that you uh, spend to purchase your account, it gets uh, preserved for you. Uh, it, I'm sorry, it gets it, it goes into the fund and it grows. So we don't touch that money. That money uh, sits in there uh, except for uh, four percent a year that we're able to take out um, in order to um, pay for your storage. That four percent also pays for the eventual migration of the data of the day. So we know JPEGs aren't going to be here in 15 to 20 years. We've seen video file formats change very swiftly in, in our own uh, lifetime. And we will get, we guarantee that your data will be moved into the data of the day, that you don't have to spend that uh, money to do that. Um, we also uh, guarantee that your uh, images are kept in their full resolution. It's high resolution uh, images that um, are compressed in Facebook, as I mentioned before, and in a number of other places. Um, so you're able to download and reprint and um, have them available in a larger format than a very small photo. And as I said, we are guaranteeing this for your lifetime plus 100 years. Um, and we're only allowed to say that um, by law 100 years, but it's this is being set up for many hundreds of years, even a thousand years uh, to go down through many generations. So um, to give you an idea of other funds that are out there, um, Harvard's Endowment Fund is over 350 years old. Oxford's Endowment Fund is over 850 years old. And a commercial example would be MetLife, whose uh, insurance fund is um, 168 years old. So um, this kind of setup for uh, investment of money uh, and having the money grow to pay for the future um, is um, uh, 
a very good way to do it. You can check out our Forever Guaranteed Fund at uh, forever.com and, and all of our uh, information is in there very specifically. Um, we've got six patent pendings um, on our fund um, also. So what else do we guarantee? We guarantee um, your security, that your account is fully encrypted, it's triple backed up, and when we say triple backed up, we know it's in three separate servers, but in addition, all of those servers are redundant. So you're probably in about nine places. Uh, again, much more secure than your computer and your external hard drive. Um, we are in, uh, they're geographically diverse, they're across the country, so uh, if some one of the servers should go down, um, we've got backups in other locations that are not geographically close to each other. We've got account holders in 50 states, um, at least 10 countries was the last I'd heard, and um, I'm sure we're in more countries than that now. So we are worldwide. We're committed to your privacy. We don't data mine you. We don't advertise to you based on what's in your photos. Uh, we don't sell your data to third parties. Uh, you own all your own content. Um, you decide who you're sharing um, your information with, your photos with, and you're able to manage who you're passing your account on to, the legacy and succession of your account. We are mobile and shareable in that we have an app that you, we can download to your iPhone, your iPad, and your Android, um, and you can see your photos from any of those locations um, at any time that you're connected to the Internet. Um, you've seen, I'm sure, um, this out of storage um, horror that happens when you have too many photos on your phone and um, this won't happen and you won't have this fear uh, if you are automatically uploading your photos to your forever account. So when I take my pictures, uh, as soon as I hit Wi-Fi, my photos upload. You can use data, uh, but I choose to use Wi-Fi, so my photos automatically go up to my account. And I'll show you an example of that. So let's go and um, look at an example of my account. This is the home page on my account, and it's easily accessed through um, forever.com. And um, you'll see here a number of different albums that I've created. And these are albums in a loose sense of, a, of the term that um, these photos all belong together uh, in the same album. You will also see those scrapbook albums that are in here um, that I've uploaded to. So um, this goes on and on and on, many thousands of photos. So I'm going to select um, one of these albums, and so you take a peek and see what's inside of those. So what you're seeing here uh, are the photos from my parents' wedding album. And up here in the information, um, this is a, uh, an, a, a uh, t I'm telling you about uh, this particular album. Uh, there is no character limit. You can write a novel if you wish in here. And if you had written something somewhere else, you could copy and paste it directly into this, um, into this box. Um, the date that these photos were taken were September 15th, 1954, and um, it also tells you that I'm sharing this album with people that I've designated as my friends and family. Um, from here, I can share this album uh, by uh, taking this uh, link and sending it via email, or um, I can post it on Facebook knowing, though, that uh, anyone who has that link can see um, these photos. It's up to me if I am enabling people to be able to download the photos or just to view them. So I could do either one. Um, I don't have to um, let them be able to download them. If I go into an individual photo, um, I can write a further description on that. I can do tagging with it. And there's other metadata um, that's down here it's showing you the size of the image and um, other information. Um, and I also can share individually this photo, and I this is in my account, I can download this photo right to my desktop. The organization of this account um, is over here on the left-hand side, and these are my albums. And I can nest albums too, so I can have albums inside of albums. So once this gets a little bit more unruly and 
Um, I'm a little bit more organized. Um, I will nest albums inside of albums. When you see a, a, a black lock, that means I'm not sharing that album with other people. So you know what that what that is. It's very easy to make an album and just click new album. I can also look at um, just in general uh, what is in this library and these are this is where I've uploaded my photos so you can see here this is all photos and these were actually taken yesterday um, I am sending all of my scrapbook these are very old scrapbook albums um, to be digitized uh, to forever so they will be in my account um, and lo look a whole lot better than this these were just snapshots uh, that I took that I wanted to be able to have the order that I sent the photo uh, that my scrapbook is in. But I can look at my photos on what's not in an album and you're going to see those photos disappear because I've already placed them. I guess I missed one here. Um, already placed them into an album. So um, I think I call this traditional scrapbooks. Maybe. And I can send that. Yeah, there it is. So here is this photo that belongs in there. So I'm just going to send it over. So that picture now will is in the traditional scrapbooks. And what's left are photos that still need to be organized. And some of them will never be organized. I'll just end up deleting them. Because we all take photos like this of prices. And I'm shopping for, uh, for outdoor furniture. But um, you'll see other photos here that I've not quite organized yet. Um, if I go back to all of my uh, photos, I can filter it by date uh, and by year and see what's not been organized. And I can promise you there are some. Yep, here's 2015. So these photos still need to get organized uh, in there. And I want to show you my people section. And this, these are the people that I'm sharing my uh, albums with. Uh, and some of these people have accounts and some don't. But, um, for instance, I'll go into this account of my sister's and look at this album and I can see there are a number of photos of my parents in here so if I want to copy this album to my account I can do that click of a button and copy it I also in the people section have the people that are my account managers people that I am uh, and this is my daughter my son and my husband or my my daughter, my husband, and my son, and that's the order in which um, I believe they'll take care of the content in here. So right now my daughter is turned on. I can only turn on one person at a time, um, but uh, forever knows that these people are related to me and should I pass that these count, this account will be passed on to them. If there's no one listed here, forever takes possession, will not let anything be changed in the account, but they will pass it on when someone shows uh, evidence that they are related to you. And um, the managed account shows if you're managing someone else's account, you may be managing a, a, a parent's account or a client if you uh, do this as a business. Uh, let's go back to our display here. Our, uh, so this is giving you an idea of the pricing uh, for a forever account. So everyone comes in with a permanent membership at 10 gigabyte and um, this says about 2500 photos but that really is dependent upon um, your your photo taking if you're taking them all with your cell phone or if they're with a 25 megapixel camera um, so that that number is variable but with your permanent membership you have all of your guarantees of a lifetime um, your goals to pass on to future generations, the full resolution, everything being triple backed up, the migration to new formats of the day, your ability to share, um, and that all comes with your permanent membership. So what's different about us and many other online cloud storage is that you pay continually for those. Once you have paid for your membership with Forever, you own it forever. So we, we don't come back and ask for more money from you. You can start um, your you can get your 10 gigabyte account for $29 a month for 12 months or you can do a one time payment which gives you $50 off uh, for $299. And as I said, you're, we never ask for more money, money again. Um, this money is getting invested and it's growing. You can purchase more storage immediately or you can buy more storage later. 
Uh, and as you can see here, uh, this is the price um, of the 10 gigabyte. And you can add to that right from the beginning and add another 10 gigabyte. Um, and your full payment is 398 And at a 100 gigabyte for a total of 110 additional, um, it's 798 So you can see your price drops um, pretty dramatically from the 10 gig down to 110 gig, um, seven, $7.25 per gigabyte versus $29.90 per gigabyte. So that initial payment um, gets your account set up and all of the uh, particulars that have to be um, um, done to get your account in line. Then the price per gig starts to drop uh, as your size of your storage goes up. And you can buy uh, incrementally, you know, 10, 10, 10, uh, for $99 uh, per 10. That's what it comes down to. Um, you can also do that um, with monthly payments too. So you can um, do a monthly payment and um, add to your storage. So in addition to the permanent storage, Forever also has um, other products that have to do with a full service um, of your account. So we have uh, digital scrapbooking and digital photo books. Um, and we also take care of your media conversion. So when we talk about media conversion, you have to think about where is your media being converted and who are you entrusting uh, with your precious slides and uh, old VHS tapes and reel-to-reel. -reel. And Forever is, um, uh, has a, um, ha owns the facility that does the digital conversion. Uh, it's our North American center, and it's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, we own the brick and mortar building. We own we own the company that that it's part of forever. When you send your uh, photos and slides or bring them down the street to Joe's photos, he's often or in most cases he's sending them out. Uh, the big box stores send your um, media out to be converted. And in many cases, they're going to uh, India. India has very large conversion facilities. But I, I would be a little leery about that. You know, I'm handing those photos over that are precious and um, giving them to the kid at the counter and hoping that um, they, they eventually make their way back to me. Um, the other thing to look at with uh, video conversion is are you able to watch the video um, through your own devices and not through... Um, a online service that has control over your videos. Um, that's a very common thing that um, that takes place. Um, when we take your videos, um, we convert them and put them into uh, MP4 format and send you back jump drives or external hard drives. Um, and at the same time, we are storing them for you. Um, video will be opening up in your Forever account um, in the next year or so and you'll be able to watch the video there. Right now, Forever has about 100 gigabyte of my videos, my, my, my family's videos um, that will be um, viewable. Uh, I can view them now on, my, on the jump drives, but um, they'll be in my account in, um, uh, soon. Uh, all of your uh, video, all of your uh, data comes back to you. So this is what it looks like uh, initially, and this is actually my box. And here are my photos and slides that were converted and placed into my account. So uh, the way we do it is through um, conversion packages, and you pick the box that works best for you. Um, everything is sent um, to through FedEx, insured FedEx. Um, we have not lost anything, and... Uh, you can actually talk on the phone to someone at the conversion facility. Uh, if you have any particular instructions, you will get uh, email notice from them when they receive your box, and you'll get an email when they're sending it back to you. Um, and you can see by the size of these boxes, um, there's quite a bit of space in here. So each box has a value in conversion. Um, you're paying for, um, you prepay for that. So this box has a a value of $300, this one has a value of 100 and this one has a value of 50 And um, your um, I can or uh, talk to you about what you can put into those boxes and give you the details on the cost for each, um, each of our items.
We also have desktop applications um, that um, this one, Artisan, is award-winning software for doing digital scrapbooking, and I, um, I've been using it for the last 10 years. It's a wonderful, very powerful program for digi scrapping. Um, you can do uh, very um, simple template-based uh, books, or you can do uh, more sophisticated um, uh, pages too. Um, historian is for um, people who have extremely large photo collections that they want to organize on their desktops before sending them up to forever. Um, we do have uh, currently an online platform for doing digital scrapbooking, um, but it is uh, being rebuilt and re-released um, uh, hopefully later this year. Um, so I'm not talking about that right now, but um, we are in the we are very uh, aggressively uh, rebuilding that program online uh, to fit the needs of our customers. So um, with Forever, you have a one-stop shop for all of your photo needs. All of your photos go into one place online that get passed down to future generations. You can also create wonderful photo gifts, books, calendars um, to bring your photos back into your life. And um, uh, you get my services, my help to do all of these items. Uh, Forever um, has some very good training, um, but you also get um, access um, to me. Uh, I'm a certified trainer. Um, with forever. Um, so I thank you so much for dropping in and checking us out and I will be in touch to talk to you more about um, all of forever's off offerings. Thanks so much.